Flames of War has been one of the mainstays of the Gadjo store since it opened back in 2008. We've developed a large and enthusiastic base of players over the years, so we weren't all that surprised by the local response to Battlefront's release of their Cold War system, Team Yankee, last year. Our tread heads have been building armies as fast as Battlefront has been releasing models, and we've had to adapt our terrain in the club room to create battlefields from the Central Front circa 1985. When putting a table together for any game, we try and start by asking ourselves two questions. What are the distinguishing features of this particular part of the world, and why are the armies fighting over this bit of it? Our aim is to produce a battlefield that not only looks right and makes sense topographically, but one that also gives some context to the battle being fought there. This video gives a tour of the most recent Team Yankee battlefield we put together, and a few insights into how things were done and why. This battlefield utilizes all 120 square feet of table space available in our club room. The base is a system of one foot square ceramic tiles purchased from the local Home Depot. These are two tiles deep, allowing us to cut out rivers from the upper tile on our river modules so that our rivers sit below the basic level of the terrain. This seems to make a big visual difference. The river tiles are built geomorphically to give us practically unlimited variations in the drainage patterns we can put onto our battlefields. Some people don't like tile systems because they produce a grid of lines where one tile meets another. The upside of this, though, is that we can use that grid to denote the boundaries of woods without having to use templates under the trees. Like all terrain construction, our ceramic tile system trades off weight for strength and durability. It's very, very tough, but also extremely heavy, and we have to store it on rugged industrial shelving. The basic concept for this particular layout was a minor river valley that had formed the de facto front line, with multiple axes of advance running across it an autobahn at one end of the table, and several minor roads at other points. This was optimized for multiple players to have forces engage at diverse points on the table. We also took care to break up the lines of sight across the table. The weaponry in Team Yankee is extremely deadly, and a table that is too open will produce an equally quick and bloody game. In Central Europe, most ground that is not urbanized, flood-prone, or too rugged tends to be cultivated. So our wooded areas are concentrated on hills and along river valleys. The hills themselves denote the boundaries of some woods, the others are assumed to be bordered by the edges of river tiles. Germany is fairly densely populated. Battle in the 1980s would largely have been fought in the gaps between urban areas. To reflect this requires a lot of buildings. Space eats up 15mm buildings at a fearsome rate, so it's taken us a lot of time and money to build a collection big enough to build realistically large urban areas. We've now assembled a good mix of foreground laser cut kits, JR Miniatures resin buildings, and Battlefront's own mix of pre-painted offerings. The ever-growing Battlefront range now includes a number of items specialized for the post-World War II era. You can probably pick out the gas station and the fast food joint in the edge of the town in the foreground. The overpass in the foreground of this shot was scratch-built. The small town that spread along the river valley further back is another mix of buildings both centuries old and modern that's fairly typical of Germany. We have enough buildings now that we can try and lay out our towns with some internal logic to them. Industrial areas tend to be on the edge, with more traditional historic structures clustered around the centre. We created the autobahn by laying two stretches of Battlefront's modern roads next to each other and separating them with battlefront concrete walls as a central crash barrier. Convenient transportation corridors, this one runs across a river valley along the foot of a range of wooded hills, tend to accumulate multiple communication arteries. To reflect this, we had a railroad and a telegraph line running alongside our autobahn. We could have added a line of power pylons to that list, but decided it would overly clutter the table. We found that a key to constructing a good table is to know when to quit. This is a close-up of Battlefront's new European farm model. Like all their models, the roof is detachable. Although these come with a respectable basic paint job, we always upgrade ours. The bulk of this tends to involve washes and dry brushes, but we've also found that highlighting the windows tends to make a big difference to their overall look. The vineyard in front of the farm is scratch-built. The long view up the table gives some idea of the size of the 20 foot by 6 foot battlefield. 
Although there is an inevitable compression for scale, we try for a sense of looking across actual terrain with differing but cohesive features stretching into the distance. Here's a close-up of the town in the river valley. The blocks in the foreground are foreground laser-cut kits. These take quite a bit of assembly, but they are excellently engineered, have good instructions, and best of all are pre-painted. Once you put them together, they're ready to go. A quick close-up shot looking across the table towards the edge of the town on the far side of the valley. The wheat field to the left is artificial fur from a craft store spray painted with desert yellow. The mill is an old architectural heritage model. We surrounded it with some battlefront pre-painted stone walls and connected it with a battlefront dirt road. You can see the river cut out behind the mill. The beds of reeds are made from cut up pieces of doormat. If you want to see the armies of NATO and the Warsaw Pact rampaging all over this peaceful patch of German countryside, check out the blog section of our website. There'll soon be an after action report of the game posted there.